Hey everyone, I'm Katie Darrell, and today we are at home and social with Belinda Carlisle, and I'm freaking out. I am. <laughs> Don't. Well, so there's a lot of avenues that I'd like to go down and discuss with you. Um, obviously, there's so much history um, and wonderful things in your career. But first and foremost, congratulations, finally, on the induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it was a big surprise. I mean, um, I think that we, when we all agree that it was probably the documentary that that sort of brought us to the attention. I mean, the story is so incredible. For anybody who's seen the story, a lot of people don't know the story. So I think that caused a lot of noise. And um, when my son called me, because I was in Thailand and he called me and he, you know, at four o'clock in the morning, you think it's going to be a horrible call. And he said, oh, my God, I can't believe it. But guess what? You know, and he told me. And yeah, I mean, it's an amazing, an amazing feeling. And to be actually be one of the acts that's going to be inducted in a few weeks is you know, it's it's pretty incredible. It's it's a great way to cement the legacy. Well, for people that don't quite understand why this is so important and, and the waiting game, the Go Go's were eligible for 15 years before yeah. this happened. I mean, th yeah. then you have other bands that are way more fresh and and barely had to wait and got in in a snap of a finger. Yes. So, was there a point, you know, obviously being eligible for 15 years, that you stopped holding your breath? Let's say. Well, we knew because it was just so weird, the people, the, the acts that were getting in, not taking anything away from them. Um, and we weren't even on the ballot. And I remember I would get the ballot sent to me because I was one of the people voting and I'd just write in go -Go's and just check off the box. Um, but I think we all pretty much came to the conclusion that there were some uh, like a personal acts to grind. Um, with the band because it didn't really make any sense and and there were a few theories ab about that i know that there was there were a, a few people who really didn't like us and that's fine you don't have to like the music but you can't take away from the fact that of what we did and what we've achieved against all odds so um there were a lot of uh changes in the rock and roll hall of fame as far as the committees and stuff and as soon as there, there were changes, um, we got on the ballot and we were in. So I do believe it was something really personal. Um, to, to speak on some of the accolades and the things that were overlooked, because, you know, there are people that are, oh, go, go, bubble gum. N not the truth. Not the truth. No, no. Specifically because you are the first and only all-female band to write and play the instruments on a number one album. That, you, you can't deny that. And, and the yeah. fact that obviously it was, you, of course you took it personally. Yeah, I mean, the only like 26 acts have, have achieved that. And, and, you know, Elvis and the Beatles and, you know, acts of that caliber. Um, but, you know, I think, that's why I think the, the documentary was so important because people do make that assumption that, the Go-Go's were, you know, bubblegum, you know, sort of throwaway pop. And if you really listen to the lyrics and what um, is being said in a lot of those songs, they're not fluffy lyrics. They're, there's like a dichotomy between the the melodies and, and, and the lyrics. And, you know, Gina, I mean, Jane and, and Jane Wheedlin and Charlotte Caffey, who write most of the songs along with Kathy Valentine, um, write incredible lyrics. I mean, they're very, very deep. So, you know, you can just write out the music really because it's fluffy or whatever, but I mean, they're great melodies and the, and the lyrics are, are really intelligent. So, but besides that, I think the story that we actually put ourselves together had no idea what we were doing and achieved what we did. I mean, that's an incredible story. You've mentioned the documentary a couple of times here, so I want to make sure our viewers know. Well, yeah. first off, I'm Katie Darrell. She's Belinda Carlisle, and we are At Home and Social. Uh, the Go-Go's are um, part of the 2021 induction class for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Congratulations. And this documentary has a 97% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. And let me just say, that is the same rating that The Godfather has. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I know it's it's like ninety eight percent critic uh, approval and ninety seven audience approval. I mean that's kind of insane, but it's a really really good story and 
it's told really well through the director, um, Alison Elwood. She did, she got us and she understood the humor. Um, just, she understood the band. So she was able to put together, you know, she was, she's a great storyteller. So I'm very, that, if it wasn't for that documentary, I'm not so sure that we'd be inducted. Maybe we would be, but that really helped. When the documentary was being made, um, did you see the final cut before it was, you know, unveiled at Sundance? Or did you kind of step back and just kind of cross your fingers and hope everything was going to look great? You know, it's, it's, you know, in my experience, a lot of it is in the power of the edit. You can be made to look however the director wants to make you look. So um, we were, I mean, I, the, the, when I got the video in my inbox um, to look at, I sat there for a couple of days because I was horrified. You know, I didn't know what, if I wanted to see it. I don't know how, it, how I, you know, I was going to come off or any of us were going to come off. But when I finally saw it, I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And um, there were a few little tweaks. Uh, and then seeing it in the big screen on Sundance was, you know, I really didn't realize and did really didn't think about everything that we've achieved but seeing it up there on the big screen it's like oh my god I had like new respect for everybody in the band and I think everybody in the band feels the same way it was just like wow we did that you know I mean it's, it's amazing it's an amazing story let's talk about the other ladies in the band I'm just going to say go run down the names and okay. you know give me an adjective or, or a memory and it can be a quick little snippet nothing doesn't have to be long and too overly personal although I would like that <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's start with Kathy Kathy is hysterical she's um an amazing she's probably her and Gina are, are, are great musicians um but she's sort of an intellectual uh she has a great sense of humor. All right, let's go to Jane. Jane is a genius, uh, hands down. I mean, Jane's been in my life for, since I was 18 years old and uh, she's still a mystery, um, and she's a, but she's a genius. And um, I just, you know, I love her. I'm a big fan of her songwriting. Jane knows where the bodies are buried. <laughs> I think we all do. <laughs> uh, how about Gina? Gina is the most hysterical person I know. I mean, she actually, if if the go-go's didn't happen, she should probably should have done stand-up. You know, she's foul, and uh, I love that. And um, and she has a, a a huge heart. And what about Charlotte? Charlotte's sort of the like the mother hand of the band, and she's a very she's very Libra. And you know, very sort of balanced, and yeah. and uh, she's sometimes she's the voice of reason because it can kind of sometimes spiral out of control with energy and stuff in the band, and she's the calming force and the voice of reason. You, you were talking earlier about uh, the Go Go's in your lyrics and how they are deep, and that that you know, it, if someone thinks it's bubblegum, it's just on the surface, and that they're not really taking the time, the time. to get in there and listen and understand. Uh, let's dive into Club Zero. This is the latest single from the Go Go's. There's a music video with it as well. Everyone looks fantastic, and <laughs> everyone still sounds fantastic. So you still have it. What? Where's the magic? I you know that the magic I think is one of those intangible things. Um, there's a lot of space between, um, you know, the times we do get together. And I think that that helps, but I'll say that what, whenever we see each other and we get on stage and start playing, it's just, it's a combination of the five people. It's just, it just happens. We don't have to do anything. It's, it's like riding a bike. Well, uh, everyone will get a chance to see you uh, perform live because you have announced that there's a tour coming up in 2022. Uh, it's not just any old tour. <laughs> it's with Billy Idol, man. Yeah, yeah. We, have, we, we have some dates at the end of the year and we thought that we haven't played the UK in ages. And I mean, I have because I have a solo career there, but um, we just thought it would be fun. It's no pressure. We're opening up for him. We know him from way back, you know, um, so we just thought it'd be a fun thing to do. That's all. Yeah. It, it's never too early to talk about set lists. When you're touring with Billy Idol, what song uh, do you think true. you're going to come out of the gates with? Well, I mean, um, well, the obvious ones, like we got the beat and lifts. But I think that it'll be, you know, I'd like to think it's going to be more focused on a Beauty and the Beat. Because that's the album 
that the people that know the of the Go Go's and the right. UK, that's the one that, that those are the songs that they know. Uh, let's go down and do a little bit of memory lane. Let's go back to the LA scene when you guys were, when you gals were getting started, uh, the sunset strip, the vibe, the tension, uh, the fun, you know, yeah. t- tell me what it was like to be there, you know, really at the beginning of such an iconic, um, place for rock music. Yeah. I mean, doesn't come along very often. Um, wow. It was, it was, um, It was a really, I mean, it was electric. There was like something in the air. Um, It was all art. It was coming off actually too, when you think about it, the Laurel Canyon uh, scene was like five years earlier and then it segued into this punk scene. So the Sunset Strip, but we had the whiskey, you had the Roxy, you had the rainbow, of course. You had the mask in Hollywood, you had Club 88 in Santa Monica, you had Chinatown, and then you had everything in between. And it was just... I mean, those early days, like at the mask, I mean, it, it was just the most exciting, exciting, uh, one of the most exciting times in LA. And I mean, we all knew that we were lucky to be a part of it because that kind of thing doesn't happen so often, but the creativity that was coming up, was just so exciting. And in the music went all night, it just went all night, every night. Um, you know, I lived at uh, probably the center of it in a flop house full of girls called Disgraceland with my um, friend Pleasant Game. And so we'd have all the bands that came in from, you know, from the UK coming through and, you know, it was parties all the time. I mean, that's kind of things when you do when you're young, but it was it was just fantastic. I'm I'm really, really, really lucky to have experienced something like that that doesn't come along too often and hasn't come along since, really, you know. There's so many other great bands that came up on the Sunset Strip around the same time as you. Is there any band in particular that you remember seeing, rubbing shoulders with, and just knowing these are good people and and I really hope that they get great success and then you saw the success and you went, yes, for them in particular? Gosh. Well, I mean, the one that comes to mind was probably Motley Crue and seeing them at the Starwood and at the Whiskey. And uh, not that they were like friends, but seeing them and going and going wow they do have something special and i might not you know love their music but they were exciting to see live and and then all of a sudden they took off i mean van halen the same thing in the late 70s i remember um i remember um you know seeing them and uh, you know they didn't come out of the puck scene they were just slightly before but seeing them and then knowing that they were um they exploded. And, you know, there were a few bands like X from the Blasters that had a lot of success and still do have success. And yeah, there was a lot of talent that came out of LA at that time. For those of you just joining us, uh, we are at Home and Social with Belinda Carlisle. Uh, the Go-Go's are um, being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, class of 2021. Some of the other bands that are on the roster along with you include the Foo Fighters, Carol King, Tina Turner, uh, Jay-Z, is there anyone in particular that you're kind of excited to uh, be eating mini appetizers next to? Well, <laughs> Let's I have be to honest, say there's going to be cocktail parties. There's a, there's a funny story to this because um, I my first band I was in a band called The Germs with Pat Smear, who's in uh, the Foo Fighters. And when we both got inducted, he texted me and said, can you believe we've gone from the germs to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? And, you know, and the germs are one of, were like a seminal L.A. punk band. I mean, super hardcore. And he was a guitar player. So we had a laugh about that, you know, and, and actually we met trying to get Freddie Mercury's autograph when they were on tour in the late 70s. So there's a, there's a history there. So I'm really looking forward to seeing him because I haven't seen him in a long time. And, you know, I'm, I've worked with Carol King. I love her. I'm, I'm sort of intrigued with meeting um, the idea of meeting Jay-Z, um, you know, because I, I think he's bigger than life. And, and um, um, I'm looking forward to that, too. So, yeah, I mean, the Foo Fighters, I love the Foo Fighters. So it, it's a great class. I don't think Tina's going to be there or Todd Rundgren's going to be there. But um, fingers crossed that somehow they'll make it. I'm a sucker for a trophy and a nice, good little statuette. <laughs> Do you have plans for where your Rock and Roll Hall of Fame trophy will sit in your home? I or are you a storage unit gal? That. Do you just keep it all tucked I, away? Uh, well, I mean, we're in, we're, we're you know, yeah, we're I, I I'm live in Thailand and I haven't been able to go get back to Thailand for months now. So, 
um, I don't know. I have to think about where to put it. I have no idea. I never even thought about that, actually. Got to dust off a shelf. Got to get a exactly. little space ready. I do. I do. I would love to talk about your solo work because as I mentioned at the beginning of the interview, I loved it. I, I simply adored. I mean, I, I can sing circle in the sand, you know, mm-hmm. soup to nuts with you right now. I mean, if you want to, but <laughs> <laughs> um, what was it like to um, take that time away from the go-go's and um, put out the solo album? Oh, well, you know, um, I always knew that I had, the opportunity to make a solo album when the go-go's broke up that was i thought what what else am i gonna do i you know i don't know how to do anything else i mean so i took the opportunity and it just happened to be a a, a successful career and and um i mean i still work all the time my solo stuff and i have two projects coming out next year so you know still being creative in that way and i i love my solo solo work um just as much as i do the go-go's work it's it's different. Um, there are pros and cons to, to each one. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was really, really lucky to have that too. I mean, that, that doesn't happen too often. And I realize that. What was the juggle like being a rock star and a mom at the same time? Well, I mean, it wasn't easy. I mean, but, but I'm lucky that my husband um, sort of you know, took over when I was away. There's a lot of traveling. Um, a lot of touring and you know we try to we tried to travel as much as we could uh, as a family whenever I'd have to to travel and uh, yeah it's it's not an easy thing juggling it I have to say I I know when when you uh, did get inducted or uh, nominate no when you when you did find out about the official uh, induction was around the corner for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame your son wrote a great article basically being like yeah guys like why did it take you so long what was it like getting to read that piece <laughs> oh I, oh you know it it was well he's an amazing writer he writes for you know a lot of different publications and and. Uh, you know, I mean, he's he's just as proud of it as I am. So um, it was great reading a, uh, his article that had been published in Billboard, which, uh, you know, has been a part of my life for so for so long. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm I was I was proud, just as proud as he was. Uh, I know earlier we did mention that the Go-Go's uh, documentary is available on DVD and Blu-ray. What isn't in the documentary that you think <laughs> people need to know about you or the Go-Go's? Oh gosh, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of darker stuff, which, you know, would have been, it, it, you know, if you compare it behind the music to, uh, which was like the most, I think, I, I think it was the most watched behind the music of all the behind the musics because there was a lot of dirty laundry in there. Yeah. We could have done a lot of dirty laundry, but there was, I mean, the story is much more positive and they're much more, you know, beautiful moments and dark moments. So I think it was really important to concentrate on that. But, you know, there were there were a lot of, you know, personal struggles on all of our parts that, that weren't in there. I could have gone on and on and on. I was so tired of talking about, I didn't, I'm so glad I didn't have to talk about my drug addiction, you know, which has been, I've done to death, you know, or my eating disorders or my, you know, my problem with weight, which my weight was, that was one of the things that, I think one of the darker things for me is that, there was always a focus put on my weight. You know, I was always in the beginning, you know, pretty and plump or cute and chubby or svelte or she's been eating, you know, hitting the deli tray too often. That kind of stuff mess really messes with a young girl's head. And that really, really, really messed up my brain for a while because I never really thought about it. You know, everybody else thought about, about the way I looked, you know, but I really didn't think about it. I never had a problem before you know, with, with getting boyfriends or doing this or that, but that was a really, really tough thing. But, um, you know, I could, that could have been in the video, I guess, as a personal struggle, but I don't know, like I said, there are many more beautiful moments than, than, uh, dark moments. And how lovely that social media didn't exist back then for you. Could you imagine? God, I would have been the Lindsay Lohan of my time. Seriously. (laughs) <laughs> bless her because i think she's finally pulled it together but yeah. honestly i'm glad there weren't cameras around i mean just towards the end of my you know my addiction you know because went out which went on for 30 years um the cell phone started the camera started and i'm just really lucky 
<laughs> I'm just yeah. really lucky that that I stopped before that became like a kind of a normal thing to have a camera on your phone. Well, Belinda, congratulations on everything. A great solo career, a great career with the Go-Go's, um, great recovery. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really happy for you and I'm very proud of you. And thank you for thank taking you. the time to talk oh, with Access you. TV. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you. Hey there. Thanks for watching Access TV. Subscribe, follow, like, and do all the good stuff. And make sure you leave a comment below. I don't know. Just let us know what your favorite Access TV show is or who your favorite bands are and what artists you're into. Or just say hi, man. I like to be told hi. We love hearing from you. That's the point, all right? Keep it coming.